Yep, time for some solo Bitcoin miner lottery content. Yeah. Hey everyone, how's it going? So yeah, these are three of the little ESP32s. And as you can see, they're doing over 300 kilohash. Much better than the original 50 kilohash or the upgrade 77 kilohash. And now Jingle Mining has updated it to 250 kilohash. These are doing th over 300. And just full transparency, I am not paid for this whatsoever. NM Miner doesn't even know I'm making this video. I'm not sponsored. I am not paid. Actually, the only way I'm going to get paid for this is the product I'm going to show you today if you buy it out of my Amazon affiliates link down in the description below. Other than that, just enjoy the information. So, yeah. This company, this guy, whoever he is, or whatever it is, um, has custom firmware out for ESP32 devices that actually uses the built-in SHA-256 crypto part of the ESP32, the actual hardware part, to process and do the hashing. The ones that did this 75 kilohash, a 55 kilohash, that's literally running on the two low-power CPUs that are in the ESP32. That's why you got such a low hash rate. It actually has a small little ASIC built into it. Not very fast, but definitely a lot better. Now, what I want to take a look at today are these. You can get these for like $17 off. Hey, how you doing? You can see me. Um, $17 on Amazon. These are the CYB boards. Yeah, uh, cheap yellow boards. They're still an ESP32 with a built-on screen. You can see the... ESP32 there, a couple power connections or sensors, uh, micro SD card, uh, micro USB, USB-C, battery if you want, to, or maybe this is a battery, one of these, a different connector, oh no, this is uh, hardwired power, and that's uh, battery, and it's a touch screen, but we're not going to be using it in a touch screen capacity, so we're going to program this, because supposedly by NM Miner, it says this one can get over 900 kilohash, almost a mega hash, which in the grand scheme of things is nothing on Bitcoin or any SHA-256 coin, but it definitely gives you a little bit more of an edge. So this is $17 and a license from NM Miner for each unit is $3. So we're talking $20 total. And here's another reason why I am just done with trying to be the crypto influencer, trying to make people happy, make companies happy that we're going to promote their product and we get a product. Jingle Mining contacted me about six months ago or whatever. And they're like, oh, to get your foot in the door, you need to uh, review our little lottery miner for $50. That's what it costs the consumer. I mean, they would have sent to me for free and then I got to talk nice about it. No. I can't do that in good conscience. I'm done playing that game. Why would you pay $50 for something originally when they were releasing this? Only did 77 kilohash. Now they're showing the picture with the 250 because they got their new firmware under a... You got to go through Telegram or some other crap just to get the firmware update. It's, it's completely ridiculous. It's stupid. Um, sorry, that's a complete waste of money for your lottery when you can literally build it. Out of something like this for $17 plus $3 of license and get over three times the hash rate. And what we're looking here, this is on the GitHub for NM Miner. And it shows you the average performance of everything he supports. Now, the one we're working with, the CYB board, the cheap yellow board, is this ESP32-2432-S028R. God, a freaking mouthful. It says 986.3 kilohash. That's the one I'm hoping I actually bought off of Amazon. We're going to find out as we flash this one. So let's get this connected up to the computer and get everything started. So on NM Miner's website, you're going to go down to Products. Wait. Okay, that works. Uh, licensing. That's what we need. We need a $3 license, $2.99 license. Let's click on that. We're going to add that to the cart. And input your device's code and activate them. So before you even pay for it or anything else, or PayPal activate, and then minor web flash tool. So we're going to go to this website. Go to, there we go. And this opens up a web uh, programmer. If I can get all this into one screen. There we go. Good enough. Um, so the web flasher is loaded. 
And M minor supported devices. So now I need to go and find that crazy number thing. Oh, I think it's this one right here. Uh, depending upon which screen it has, the ILI9341 or the ST7789. Now I got it plugged in right now. As you can see, that's just the default what the firmware comes with. Um, the thing is, it doesn't really tell me which screen it's actually using. So it's going to be trial and error, I think. I think that's what's going to happen. Because there's two different firmwares for it. So, let's go with the ILI9341. And we want the latest version, 1.7.01. Ball rate 115-200. It probably could program faster, but I'd rather just do it slower. No big deal. Uh, there's a button here for console only. That would just allow the information to come through a serial console. We actually need to program the unit, so make sure that's off. And it's still got everything selected. So we're going to click Connect and Program. And you're going to get this window open. You're going to scroll down here to USB Serial. I think that's what it's going to show up as. So let's bring this up into the picture just in case. Yep. Screen went off. Trying hard reset. Couldn't sync the ESP. Try resetting. I might have to hold the boot button down for this. Let's see here. Let's hold down the boot button as we plug it in. Okay, see, nothing's on the screen now. Let's see if we can connect to it. Try hard reset. There we go. Now it's flashing. I can let go of the button now. So, when you plug it into your computer, you got to hold down the boot button as you plug it in. Once it actually starts doing its work, you can let go of the boot button. And right now, it is actually flashing it as we speak. So let's give it a few seconds. You can actually see right here, it's flashing the main firmware, and you can watch the process, the progress. Okay, done flashing. It's restarting. Screen is coming up. And I got gibberish, which means I probably need the... Uh, oh, wait, no, no, there we go. It came up. It's upside down. So let's flip it around. Took a few seconds. Uh, it says license required, 0%. It's not going to do anything else. Because if you can even see on here, license not found. So it's going to give me my device code now. So we're going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to take that back to the activation tool. Copy that into here. PayPal activate. Yep, pay that. Hold two ninety. Hmm. Hold two ninety nine. Okay. Now you can export the license to CSV. You probably should do this just in case. So now I downloaded it. I got a copy of it. That's the device code we originally put in. This is your license code. Copy this. Then we're gonna go back to the Flash program. Down here at the very bottom, right down here, license code. Copy that back in there. And click activate this activation the device. And it likes it. Now it's trying to connect to Wi-Fi and all the other good stuff. But we haven't programmed it yet. So as we can see, it's trying to do something. Wi-Fi connected. I think now we gotta log on by our phone and do all the setup and stuff like that. Oh, there we go. Now all this information came up here. Wi-Fi SSID. So I can put this in here. Okay, so now that I got my Wi-Fi SSID, my Wi-Fi password, and my Bitcoin address, we're going to configure the device. It's going to save it. And we're probably going to jump in back to the splash screen. It's connecting to the Wi-Fi. Doing a version check real quick. I can see through the serial monitor over here that we are connected. It's got an IP address. It's connecting to publicpool.io, and it's got a first accepted share. And wow, that screen looks like shit. Why does it look like that? Everything's inverted or something. Got a hash error. Still going, though. And we're hashing at 985 kilohash a second. I'm sure there's a way to switch this screen. i got to figure out how the heck to do this because, God, those colors suck. Unless it's because I'm using the wrong screen. I don't know. Let's try flashing over the other firmware see what happens. Maybe that's what it is. Cause, yeah, that looks like absolute crap. So we're going to go back up here. Go ST7789. I guess i got to disconnect and tell it to reconnect. Okay, disconnected. 
There we go. Completely clear. Connect and reprogram. I'm not sure if I got to hold down the boot button again. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to have to plug it in and redo that. So let me flip this back over here. Hold down the boot button. Plug in. Okay, let's try connecting again. Connect. Okay, I can let go now. Now it's going to update the firmware again. Let's see if the screen looks better. Okay, it's done flashing. It's booting up as you can see here. Okay, it's upside down again. The screen looks better. I think that definitely looks better. That might have been the problem. Getting market data, starting the cores, starting the mining. Oh my god, look at that. That is so much better. Okay, so we had the wrong video driver set up on here. So these ones being sold from Amazon have the ST7789 display. That's the model number of the display. Uh, we can see here, best difficulty with workers, total mega hash, 986.5 kilohash. The time, my um, Wi-Fi frequency, the current Bitcoin price. The only thing it's not showing me, at least on this one, is the temperature. It even gives me my IP address, but it's not giving me the temperature of the ESP32, but I can keep my finger on it. It's not even getting warm. I've noticed that. When they start using... Oh, it's changing screens. Um, doing the hardware version of the ESP32 versus running both CPUs, they don't get nearly as hot as just running both CPUs and doing like 77 kilohash. It runs so much better. Is, does this touchscreen actually work? I don't think it does. Oh, wait. Hold on. Maybe it does. Oh my god, the touchscreen works. So it gives you public pool.io, the address, the time, your current hash rate. It's just a different screen. Not very touch good, but it works. 1.6. I really wish I had the temperature of the unit. Because the small ones up above actually give you the temperature. Is there a third screen? No, okay, it's just the two screens. That's it. But... Nice. I like it. 975.986. It's definitely at least two and a half times better than anything that's out there right now. This is the new one. It's just starting right now. So let's give it a few minutes to get the hash rate up and see if it actually compares. This is one of the little ones I just power reset. So we'll come back in a minute and refresh the screen. Okay. So you can see we've been up for 10 minutes running now. Um, Still running about 985 kilo hash, and you can see now we got the three little ones running, not 363, 254, 345. It fluctuates, and here is this one running at 941. So this is fairly accurate, just like the other three units. It actually is hashing at that rate. So with that being done, let's unplug it. Let's throw it into a case. And there we go, 3D printed little purple case that I found off of Maker World that I printed out for this. Uh, on the back, you can see it has a vent for the ESP32 chip itself and two little buttons for the boot and reset. You're supposed to screw it together, but it's actually holding together really well. So let's plug it in one more time, not into the computer this time, just regular uh, USB-C power. And you can see it exposes your hardwired power, micro USB, USB-C, and your extra... The other connectors up here and your micro SD if for some reason you want to use it for something different. So let's plug this in. There it goes. Activated, connected to the Wi Fi, doing a version check, up to date, connecting to the market to get the Bitcoin price. That's connected, connecting to the pool, connected. And we should be jumping on over here. There we go. Give it a few seconds for it to start hashing. And we're off to the races. So, $17 for the device itself, $3 for the license, and if you have a 3D printer, you can print out this case for like 20 cents worth of uh, filament, nothing, that's it, just to protect it. So, you're talking $20 and 20 cents for a Bitcoin lottery ticket that does almost a mega hash for 20 bucks. Even, here's another one. That just came out recently. Bitcoin merch. Sending out to influencers. Oh yes, please buy my keychain thing and everything for a hot 200 bucks. Each one does 70 kilohash with the hash rate, with the uh, firmware that you got. How the heck is that cost effective? Do it yourself and save a ton of money and get better hash rate. 
So if you can tell by the theme of this video, I could care less if I get blacklisted from crypto mining programs and stores and everything else. I'm going to tell it how it is. That's all I got in this video. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Comment down below. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. And I'll catch you when I got something else relevant to make a video about.